thought to himself, if God only helps those who help themselves, I shall be damned. And he received in humility the gift that only God can give. God does not help those who help themselves with respect of salvation. God helps only those who cannot help themselves and who know it. And that's why Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven, the, the harlots and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of heaven sooner than some of you who stand and pray about how proud you are for your good works. Because he who humbles himself will be exalted. He who exalts himself shall be abased. You've heard me quote Augustus' top lady's song many times, but I must do so again today. Nothing in my hands I bring, but simply to thy cross I cling. Naked, come to thee for dress. Helpless, look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, ere I die. Pastor Lutzer, in terms of salvation, you've made a good case for the fact that only God can bring about salvation because we were really dead, really deceived, and really depraved. And therefore, being helpless, only God could make us alive. We cannot, in fact, help ourselves. I want to ask a question from a little different tack, though. In terms of daily living, in terms of how we live our lives after salvation, this poses the whole issue to me of how much human responsibility is balanced with the divine energy from the Spirit here. I think of this. My room is dirty at home because I didn't pick it up. If I don't pick it up, it'll stay dirty. You mean God won't come and do it for you? No, he, <laughs> he won't send a, a maid service over. If I don't help myself, it won't happen. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I of course, believe that uh, there is some truth to the statement, God helps those who help themselves. When it comes to spiritual living, for example, James says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So we initiate, we clean up our room just like we clean up our hearts through confession and uh, so forth. And then God comes along and helps us. The reason that I think that statement is so insidious and eight out of ten Americans, by the way, believe that it's from the Bible, is that often you hear it mouthed by unconverted people. And they think to themselves that even with respect to salvation, God helps those who help themselves. So if I go to church and if I'm good and if I give to the poor, God will come along and help me. Well, if you're unsaved, no, he will only help you if you realize that you cannot help yourself, that you come to the end of your resources and he must do it all. But having saved you, yes, of course, there's a certain context in which it's true that uh, God helps those who help themselves. And those, by the way, are the words of Benjamin Franklin, basing them on earlier quotations of, of uh, a similar statement. Now, in terms of future rewards, uh, I believe it's correct to say we are to be evaluated by our works, what we did. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we balance our human responsibility with God's help in making those day-to-day -day choices to do this or that? Well, you know, there are many expressions in Scripture. I haven't studied them all, but uh, might shed some light on your question. For example, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, we are co-laborers together with God. So there's a synergy there between what God is doing and what we are doing, and thankfully he calls us to be co-laborers. So what I find to be remarkable and another expression of God's grace is this, that God gives us the ability to do good works. He works in us both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. And then he ends up rewarding us for the works that he has given us both the ability and the initiative to do. So there is that cooperation between us and God. We can't simply put up our hands and say, well, God, you do it all. Uh, you know, uh, there are certain people who, when they teach the deeper life, basically simply say, let go and let God well, there's some truth to that, but there's another side in which we have to get back to the disciplines of Christian living, where we have a human side and a human responsibility of watchfulness, of discipline, and then we can expect the blessing of God, however he might give it to us. Pastor Lutzer, over these many weeks, we have discussed ten lies about God. This has covered a huge tapestry of topics. It's plumbed the depths of theological thought, and you've even taken some of the theologians to task, and in some cases out to the woodshed during our series here. What do you think the bottom line is for the listener who's gone through all of this? He now, I'm sure, has a better picture 
of the real and true God, what do you want him to do in terms of response, having heard all of these? I believe that it is a serious mistake to treat the doctrine of God as an academic theological subject. The doctrine of God should always lead us to our knees. It should always lead us to bow in reverence. Wherever you have people meeting God directly in the Bible, you find them on their faces, whether it's Peter, whether it's Isaiah, whether it is Job. And maybe I can do best simply by quoting a word from Job. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. The better we understand God, it seems to me, the better we will worship, the better we will serve, the more likely we will be to avoid sin and seek Him with all of our hearts. If some of that has been accomplished in this series, it will have been well worth it. Thank you, Dr. Lutzer. Thanks, Dave. Today, Dr. Erwin Lutzer concluded his message on The Lie That God Helps Those Who Help Themselves. The last of ten lies about God and why you might already be deceived. Running to Win comes to you from Chicago's Moody Church. Ten Lies About God can be yours as a series on CD, cassette, or MP3. For full information, call toll-free 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Visit our website at runningtowin.org. And don't forget, this broadcast is supported by listeners like you. This is Dave McAllister. Join us Monday for What Happens When God is First. That's up on our next edition of Running to Win.